Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da ila habbati fillah The question was posed from one of our brothers and may Allah preserve us in him and protect us in him and guide us in him to that which is correct. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. He said, I live in the West and you know the issue between the students and me myself don't want to be a part of that. And I just had a son how can you advise me in bettering myself and not getting involved in these issues? It's so bad that if you go to the wrong masjid, you are marked. Wallahu musta'an. Ahabatifillah, first and foremost, we have to remind ourselves that the deen is built upon ikhlas and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam if we want our deeds to be accepted. And along with that, we have to re remind ourselves that in all situations that we have faced, that we face, in situations that arise, that we have to return back to that asl, that we have to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we deal with the situations to the best of our ability and look to see is it in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not correct first and foremost for the students to force the people to take a particular position. And we've already discussed that countless times in a beautiful statement of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in regards to this about the Sheikh or the teacher who forces his students to take his position. And Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah made it clear that it is impermissible to do so. And so unfortunately, this is the case. So what do we do in this situation? First, we should strive our best to not be involved, which I think the questioner is doing his best to do so, to busy himself with that which is good. Because if there's no benefit in it and it doesn't bring you closer to Allah, then that's evidence that there's no benefit in it and that you shouldn't waste your time in it. Another important point is that the, the students of knowledge, the beginning students of knowledge and the general people should not even busy themselves at all with these issues about who's on it and who's off it. Yes, they need to be aware if it's a masjid of, of Ahl Bid'ah and the imam and people there are calling to something other than the kitab illa wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or if the bid'ah has reached the point of bid'ah mukaffara that is the type of bid'ah which takes a person out of the fold of Islam where it's impermissible to pray behind the imam in that situation yes these things need to be brought to light but unfortunately as I believe I understand from the questioner that these are between students of Ahl Sunnah and this is some of the fitna that we see and my guess, uh, and I hate to think in a negative way, but I'm almost sure that this is probably something in the UK. We have this fitna in America, no doubt. But there in the UK, it's much more severe. The fitna is much more greater, unfortunately. And sometimes the extremeness uh, that you find of people being extreme is much more severe in many of the localities there. Shaykh Salih bin Fuzayn, Hafidhullah Ta'ala said, لا ينبغي لطلبة المبتدئين لطلبة المبتدئين وغيرهم من العامة أن يشتغلوا بتبديع وتفسيق لأن ذلك أمر خطير وهم ليس عندهم علم ودراية في هذا الموضوع وأيضا هذا يحدث العداوة والبغضاء بينهم فالواجب عليهم ال اشتغال بطلبة العلم وكف ألسنتهم أما لا فائدة فيه بل فيه مضرة عليهم وعلى غيرهم This is a beautiful kalam by Imam Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan حفظ الله تعالى He said it's not permissible for the beginning students of knowledge or other them from the general people to busy with declaring people to be innovators and tafsik and declaring people to be Facet, you know, to be wicked sinners. Because that is a very dangerous and serious matter. And they do not have the knowledge and the cognizance, you know, the ability to go to those texts and understand the nasus, the text, regarding these issues. 
or regarding these issues. Also, this brings about enmity and hatred between them. فَالْوَاجِبَ عَلَيْهِمْ So it's an obligation upon them to busy themselves with طَلَبَ الْعِلْمِ with seeking knowledge and restraining their tongues about those issues where there is no benefit in it. Rather, in those issues is harm upon them and upon other than them. And this is the result. Ahabatifillah, this is the result. This is why we have questions like this because the result of the general people and the beginning students of knowledge, and even some of them may have some years of, of, of Talib al ilm but if they really have itqan, they're not going to busy the people with this. And I'm going to give you a true story that was very enlightening for me and showed that my sheikh in the city, you know, illustrated the higher qualities and avoided his bia and calling to him. This is a real situation. We were in Hadramaut, in Dar al Hadith, in Shehr. This is a markas of Ahl Sunnah in Yemen, in Adramaut. And the Shaykh Abdullah Amari, Hafidullah Ta'ala, one of the students wanted to go to Damaj. And there was a great fitna at that time, because this uh, Shaykh Yahya al Hajuri was the, uh, the running the markas, Dar al Hadith, in Damaj. And the divisions were very clear between a lot of the ulama in Yemen. Especially from Damaj, they were declaring many of the other, some of the other Marrakis, like in Aden and this particular Marrakis, these two sheikhs, their brothers, Sheikh Abdurrahman Adani and Sheikh uh, Abdullah Adani, declaring them to be innovators. And speaking very ill about them, and whoever studies with them, and whoever goes to them, and even their students would, would uh, you know, carry this out and make lists of people who they called, they called the Hizbi list. That shows you the misguidance. That shows you where extremism can lead. And the beautiful thing about this, one of the students in our markas, he asked Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, and he said, Sheikh, I would like to go to the Maj. Uh, you know, can you advise me in this and this? And the Sheikh didn't pro prohibit him and didn't say, no, we have the ilm here. No, we have the sunnah here. No, we're correct here. No, even though he was being talked about and belittled by Al-Hujuri, the sheikh said, if you need any money to assist you to get from here, from Hadramaut to, to Sa'adah, to Damaj, then I will assist you. Showing that it isn't about causing divisions. It isn't about exacerbating divisions and busying the students with that fitna, but rather it's about, especially when it's between Ahl Sunnah, and we're talking about students between Ahl Sunnah, of trying to keep some sort of unity and trying to keep the people out of the fitna. So my advice to my brother is that first he seeks ilm, and that he keeps doing what he's doing. He's busy with a son, busy with a child, Raise your child. Busy yourself with ilm. And know you will never escape being labeled because unfortunately the people always will drag you into the fitna. But go to the masjid worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the more knowledge you have, the more you can combat their jahil. I've had people step to me, but they were ignorant. So I pulled out my sword of knowledge, the little bit that I had, and I was able to cut off the shubahat that they brought in front of me. And that's what knowledge does for you. So be confident. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Avoid the fitna. Don't speak. When the people are speaking, say, I don't know. If the people want to warn you about this masjid, and you know it's a masjid of Ahlul Sunnah, but there's differences between the other brothers from Ahlul Sunnah and another masjid. Just say, Akhi, I, I don't know. Jazakallah khairan for the warning, but I'm just trying to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you make tibdi on me for that, then that's what's best for you. And there are countless stories like this, and I hope that this is something beneficial, but you have to have, you have to strive to gain knowledge, you have to be patient in these situations, and you have to realize that it's unfortunately only gonna get worse, that there will be fitna after fitna, because we've witnessed it over years and years and years between, unfortunately, sometimes the mashayikh, and be kathir, wa kathir, between the students of knowledge. So seek refuge in Allah, and forgiveness from Allah, 
And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alayhi wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.